Long ago, one of the great Greek cities was called Thebes. At one point in its long history, on a towering rock overlooking the various roads into Thebes, there lived a horrible monster called the Sphinx. This Sphinx was not like the great stone statue in Egypt that stares out endlessly over the desert near the Great Pyramid. The Theban Sphinx, according to Greek myth, was no statue. She was a living beast. She did have a lion's body, like the Egyptian statue, but the Theban Sphinx had the face and neck of a human woman. She had wings, so she could swoop down and attack anyone, and could speak as humans do. It was she who posed or presented the riddle. Whenever a traveler tried to enter or leave Thebes, that person knew the Sphinx would be waiting on her high rock. The monster would say. I am going to eat you unless you can correctly answer this riddle. What is it that walks on four feet in the morning, on two feet at noon, and on three feet in the evening? The poor traveler was often so frightened that he could not even speak, and the cruel beast would strike with her sharp claws and teeth. Even if some clever person tried to answer the riddle, the Sphinx would always listen and then exclaim, "You have guessed wrong. Now I will eat you." No one knew why this terrifying creature had chosen to live on a rock above the road to Thebes, or why she insisted on posing this particular riddle. They knew only that she ate every person she met. Not only that, but no one from the outside would bring fresh food to, to the city, for fear of encountering or unexpectedly meeting the monster. If someone does not solve this riddle, the people told one another, we will starve. As bad as this was, it was not the only problem the Thebans faced. Their king, King Laius, never returned from a journey he had taken far from home. So the person the Thebans had usually turned to for help was not there in their hour of danger. In this dreadful situation, you can imagine how surprised the guards were when they looked out from the city walls one day and saw a man nearing the main gate. They did not recognize him, but they could see that he was tall and richly dressed. The captain of the guards said, "Maybe he will make it. I do not see the Sphinx anywhere." Perhaps she's off watching another road. But just as the captain was about to order the gate thrown open, down came the Sphinx like an arrow shot from the clouds above. She settled on her rock and looked down at the stranger with cold, pitiless eyes that held no sympathy. Traveler said the monster, "Today you have chosen the wrong road." The stranger boldly replied. I choose my own roads and my own destinations. Today I will go to Thebes. Anger lit up the monster's eyes as she said, "I alone decide who travels this road. If I say no one travels this path, so it shall be. You have one chance and one chance only. You must correctly answer my riddle. Tell me, foolish man, what is it that walks on four feet in the morning?" On two feet at noon, and on three feet in the evening, the stranger sat down in the dust of the road to think. The Sphinx, sure Oedipus wouldn't guess it, gazed down at him, her tail twitching with impatience. After some time, she stopped even that movement. For half an hour, the man sat thinking as the huge beast lay still atop its rock. Meanwhile, the people of Thebes had rushed to the walls. They knew the man would probably not guess the riddle, but it had been so long since anyone had even tried. They had to come see him try. At last, the stranger rose to his feet. "Have you an answer?" demanded the Sphinx. In a strong, sure voice, the man repeated the riddle. "What is it that walks on four feet in the morning, on two feet at noon?" And on three feet in the evening, then staring straight into the Sphinx's eyes, he said, "The answer is man. As a baby in the morning of his life, he crawls on all fours. At the noon of his life, when he is grown up and strong, he walks upright on two feet. In his old age, the evening of his time on the earth, 
He walks with the aid of a cane as if on three feet. The Sphinx's eyes flew open in shock. The traveler had answered correctly. With a cry, the monster threw herself down from her high rock. The Sphinx was finally gone. With shouts of joy, the people of Thebes rushed down from their walls, threw open the gates, and poured out onto the road. They lifted the stranger onto their shoulders and carried him into their city. There they asked, Who are you, great hero? To whom do we owe our lives? I am Oedipus, he answered. No, they replied, not just Oedipus. You are now King Oedipus, master of the Sphinx and king of Thebes. So that is the story of how Oedipus answered a riddle and became a king.